Yeah, so the, this is our, this prototype is going out to a 25,000 head feedlot on Tuesday. This is where the, the rubber hits the road. So we've had a few, few wins, a few victories. Let's call it one of my biggest victories is I finally got the needed speed on our head gate and tailgate. And like we've gone over this before, one of our scope of works is we're not going with three phase power. Maybe down the road we might offer the option to a big feedlot, but we wanted to stick with the 220 so that we didn't put ourselves out of a lot of operations because a lot of places don't have the three phase power. So that was a real challenge because we, we're, we require a more flow than our 1070 series because we took out the linkages. But through a lot of trial and error, So it's a little bit slower going out, That's which is the right way. But I got my speed going in. I'm, I'm about a little less than three quarters of a second on the speed. So one of the ways we did that was we spent a lot of time on sizing the correct lines, the correct return lines. Uh, we did, spent a lot of time focusing on major head loss and minor head loss. Major head loss is the friction in your lines. Minor head loss is the friction in all your fittings, your gauges, your quick connects, your elbows, your T's. And even though it's called minor head loss, if you're not careful, it can actually exceed major head loss. So we did a lot of experimenting with upping certain return lines. And the other thing we did, and it's helped us out, we did with our sinking issues, which is the sinking cylinders is actually the holy grail of hydraulics. So we tried getting uh, custom aluminum manifolds with the necessary internal components for sinking and load hold. But there was a couple things. One thing we didn't really like is it created some pressure loss. And pressure loss not only creates heat, it also uses up horsepower. And the other thing with fine-tuned feathering like that, we were having difficult, difficulty getting it sinking with the fine-tuned feathering, which is very, very important when working cattle. So we've ended up going with geared flow dividers from front to back. And with that, you, we've, we've got our, our nice sinking and we don't get a pressure drop because with a geared flow divider in, geared flow divider, uh, pressure in equals pressure out. And you don't get any uh, heat buildup, which we spent a lot of time on too. And also we spent a fair bit of trial and error sizing different pumps to the different motor. And we're pretty happy with what we have there. A uh, few other updates. Well, we put some nice fancy bulkhead fittings here on the front for our neck extenders. And we intend to actually tidy it up even a bit more in the next prototype. I spent a lot of time researching and working on this cylinder for the bottom squeeze. I got heavy duty custom ball ends on the end of the cylinder to account for any flex in the chute. So it's, there's no, no stress on the cylinders and those ball ends are made right in America. So I'm, I'm happy about that. The other thing we did is we dropped the heights of our doors a little bit. The last chute was a little bit, I was worried that it was a little bit too high for branding. So we dropped that and I also, we made a gap up here so that you can do pour on without opening up the opening up the door. And our split doors, we put the latches on the bottom this time. And on the vet cage, we've raised the height of the vet cage so just to make it have a real nice, easy entry exit. So we also spent a lot of time and a lot of trial and error. The first few didn't work, but we've got custom cylinders on head gate and tailgate to further get our get our speed and like i say I'm, for a while i didn't think i was going to get it but we've got we've got it